So there's really three things about these trials that are different. One is we're trying to treat people that have the disease. Uh, two, we're trying to do it in a very uh, scientific, rigorous way and only kill the bad T cells. And three, we're trying to do it in the cheapest way possible. We're trying to do an intervention that reverses the disease. So we're not talking about immunosuppression. So immunosuppression to most people is uh, a drug that doesn't target only the bad white blood cells, but it targets the good white blood cells. This is very different. We think we have a way in humans, especially in culture, but we're gonna try in people as well, to kill only the bad white blood cells that kill the pancreas. So when you change a paradigm, people are not gonna like it. Okay, so even though you think you change whether you're Newton or Joan of Arc or Galileo, the person who changes the paradigm is not going to be loved. In 2001, people were still thinking you could just uh, remove, you just needed more islets. And if you had more islets, you just needed more of them. And if you had more of them, you could put them in people with diabetes and would reverse the blood sugar. So our work came along and said, well, maybe there's another solution to this entire problem and maybe it's removing the underlying cause and seeing what people's own pancreas does. So if you look back now over 10 years there's no controversy on regeneration. There's no controversy on whether our protocol can cure end-stage diabetic mice. Okay so it took seven years for worldwide efforts to come along and uniformly prove that our mouse experiments were correct, okay? The only debate that exists on our mouse cures are whether um, the mechanism we proposed on how the pancreas regrows is the, the correct mechanism. So if you're a basic research scientist, you may argue that the pancreas regrows by cells dividing from their own cells. Other people, if you go out there, scientists are gonna say, no, it comes from the bone marrow. Other people are gonna say, no, it comes from the liver. If you're a type 1 diabetic, you could care less. JDRF um, uh, paid three researchers to duplicate our mouse experiments. That was around 2003 to 2007. And simultaneously, without JDRF money, other groups moved forward to try to duplicate it too. So 100% of the groups that have published on it have all cured end-stage diabetic mice. Okay, so the the true outcome was accomplished in every single case. The rate of cure is very different in different groups, okay? So if you're an end-stage diabetic mouse, you actually don't want to be cured here. The best um, outcome was at the NIH, okay? The worst outcome if you're a diabetic mouse was at the Joslin, okay? So, but you're still cured. 20% end-stage mice were cured at the Joslin, 100% at NIH. We had identified one mechanism, it wasn't the only mechanism we identified, in fact it wasn't even obligatory, of a stem cell coming from the spleen that could speed the process, it didn't change the cure rate, and uh, the NIH group agreed that that could occur, three of the JDRF groups said no, the spleen indirectly contributes or doesn't contribute at all, but the regeneration still occurs. So again, it's the how question of how the pancreas regrows. Um, if you're a diabetic mouse, you only care if you were cured. You don't care about the how. It's easy as a researcher to never go into a human, okay? People in the lay field or people with diabetes I always say, well, why isn't more stuff translated, okay? And I like to give the answer that translation takes a huge amount of time. It's also risky. My career, it's easier for my career if I never translate, okay? I don't have to raise a lot of money. I don't have to see people, I just order mice. And I can produce three papers a year. It's very easy. What's really hard to do is believe in your data enough to say, I believe in it so much that I'm gonna take it into humans. Because it's the ultimate test. Who wants to know a negative answer? So what we can say sitting here today is we're translating. That's how much we believe it. So uh, believe it or not, um, as of today, we have no mice in the lab have humans. And that's um, the scientific progress that and process you want to go through to eventually translate and test it in humans.
we got through phase one uh, toxicity testing through the FDA, and that's excellent. A lot of trials, 90% of trials fail in phase one. So that's a huge landmark. And so now we'll shortly start phase two. And phase two is like dose escalations. Phase one is like giving five units of insulin twice, improving nobody gets sick, verifying all these biomarkers. Now phase two is like doing an insulin trial where you say, now we're gonna give five units of insulin for six months and see how it works, okay? So phase two, you start to do different dosing and different timing and start seeing if you see therapeutic effects that people with diabetes would like to see. I think most people, it's, it's bad that we say all people, but most people now realize it's taken a long time that if you put islets or stem cells or any insulin secreting cell in a person with type one diabetes, the disease reoccurs. But if we're successful, it means a lot of other people will be successful too. Who knows, if you've had diabetes 30 years, whether your pancreas can still regenerate. But what we do know is if you've had diabetes for 30 years, guess what? You still have the autoimmunity. So we need at all costs to take away the autoimmunity, the underlying disease, no matter how long you've had diabetes. And if we can do that, then it facilitates the movement forward of a lot of other synergistic uh, synergistic therapies, whether it's islet transplantation or stem cell transplantation or islet regeneration drugs, none of those drugs are going to be useful if we can't take away the underlying disease.